to one your life hello everyone and welcome to enta presents campus care ed talks so uh, peter fredman drucker, uh, drucker was an austrian born american management consultant and he once said that if you want something new you have to stop doing something old and to do something new we have to think imagine and innovate so to talk about this we have with us today an educator who's very keen on innovation in education please welcome monica chavla ma'am she is the principal of saint joseph senior secondary school chandigarh ma'am is a gold medalist in botany she has an experience of 13 years as a principal she has received nine letters of appreciation and several awards from esteemed organizations apart from exploring new horizons for students in education and sports she tries to explore and innovate new opportunities where students can make a mark she has been instrumental in directing students to work from climate action legal literacy peace uh, nurtures etc so welcome to campus care red talks ma'am thank you thank you dear thank you for having me here thank you so much ma'am for giving us your time so uh moving forward the covid scenario has more distinctly opened up new dimensions in the field of education making innovation in education the new buzzword so ma'am to start uh, with this uh, would you please explain to our viewers like what is the role of innovation in edu- education and why it is more important than ever so if we talk of innovation in education like we uh the famous saying goes that it's no longer a sage on the stage but a guide by the side so the educators need to transform themselves as facilitators rather than as the disseminators of information because i think information is available at a finger click and it's very important for us to ensure that the environment is very enable, uh, enabling and the efforts which are made are quite engaging so it's four e formula which we have to follow that is enabling environment and engaging efforts so when these four things are driven by the passion and dedication of a teacher where she is trying to reinvent her teaching methodologies i think there is no looking back and teachers will definitely be able to mobilize face f for focus a for attention c for uh, curiosity and e for energy so when a teacher is trying to enable her environment in a manner where she is having engaging efforts involved in the classroom teaching nobody can stop her from mobilizing the curiosity focus attention and energy of the students and when they are very much attentive when they are very much focused and when they have lot of energy to understand assimilate and try to you know put it into practice then definitely there is no looking back in terms of learning so learning has to go forward and here i would just like to add a little more thing like you know generally what happens educators do feel that you know there is too much to do we have to complete our curriculum we have to do the assessments we have to ensure week students are improving it's becoming too much there are a lot many circulars coming new policies being introduced how to keep a balance between the all like we really can't be you know the clerks and the teachers at the same time but i would like to you know share a small thing here which will definitely inspire them to look forward to it as a with lot of optimism and positivity that is there is a difference between vv and ll what is vv victims vocabulary and ll is leaders language so when a teacher feels i am victim i have a burden of three sections 40 students each 120 children so it's a victims vocabulary and i have to cover the syllabus i have to take the test i have to set the paper and i have to carry out my house activities and whatever events which are taking place it's becoming too much for me to bear above all the expectation of the parents is rising every day the management is expecting too much from me in terms of results so this is victims vocabulary an individual is not constructed to be a victim but is built to be a leader so let us try to believe in this thought and try to take ourselves as leaders and believe in leaders language so we can start thinking on this that you know i have been bestowed with this job i'm working in a competitive environment i have such a healthy environment around positive aura of all my colleagues i'm learning from, by observing them all working so well and my leaders are inspiring me i'm having so many technologies at my hand to upgrade myself as a teacher and i'm blessed to transform so many young lives i have 120 children to affect to give my tender touch of care and love 
and transform their lives, transform their approaches and improve their skill and knowledge. So this is another way of looking at ourselves with more power to transform the world we are looking ahead. Great, ma'am. Uh, so, ma'am, as uh, we are talking about innovation in ed education and, you know, it can be innovation in a classroom or innovation in a school or even innovation uh, in external relations that affect the students. So, what are the innovations that we need in the classroom in terms of ped uh, pedagogical uh, practices? Mm -hmm. Uh, in terms of pedagogical practices, what we do actually, you know, every school does this. Whenever the evaluation gets over, any evaluation, whether it's unit test or midterm, we discuss with each teacher what's the performance of the students, why the students who are not getting good scores are not performing well. So, you know, most of the time we ignore the reasons. We say, oh, there's a family problem with this child. Oh, the mother is, you know, she's not keeping well. There is a chronic illness in the family. Or, the, you know, there is a divorce case going on, so the child is neglected, so we really can't do much. What we believe is, or what I would recommend every educator to believe in is, try to diagnose and analyze these categories. What kind of categories do you have and how you can formulate a strategy where you can approach them and help them to do better. Just thinking of, you know, the reasons and just cutting it out, okay, it's not, it's not because of us, it's because of the family problems, doesn't put the end, put the end to the story. There the story begins. There comes our role as an educator. There comes our role as a handholder, as a mentor, as a philosopher and a guide. So we need to carve out a way. So we had planned a personal care and attention program for all such children who are having some problem in their family backgrounds. Whether it's chronic illness, financial crisis, marital separation or any other kind of difficulty. Maybe, you know, a stepmother and, you know, not getting that warmth and love. At times it happens, not always, but whatever may be the reason, we try to make a list of such children, try to give them some uh, teachers who are concerned or connected with them emotionally, each teacher holding hand of one child. We have 150 teachers, so even if 60 teachers are volunteering for this, I think we are able to cover every child of the school and the only thing they have to do is every morning meet this child and see he's looking okay, he's feeling good, he's in high spirits, he has done his work, he's carrying a healthy tiffin. And he's looking dressed properly. That's it. Exchange a smile, exchange the greetings of the morning and the day and just tell him that I'm there for you, beta. If you have any problem, just walk to me. So this is how we can solve the problem. These are innovative ways. We just need to coin a term. We need to tell our teachers we are running this program with personal care and attention, PCA. If you find any case under PCA, please get the name noted and let us see that the teacher is appointed for that child. Secondly, there can be another important way of doing this. That is, we need to enroll the parents along with us in the journey of learning and growth. At times, parents feel we are too busy, we cannot do it. And we completely empathize with them. But we have to tell them that, sir, your contribution or cooperation with the school endeavors will definitely go a long way in improving the child. So we introduced a Star Parent Award, where if the child is improving, we are giving appreciation certificates, when a child gets three certificates, he gets a star bronze badge. And then another three silver bronze ba silver badge. And then another three gold badge. All the go gold badge bearers, their parents are invited in the school and they are honored by the chief guest on a special ceremony. So it's a star parent award program. So the parents have now started feeling involved. They are keeping a track of child's improvement. On the PTMs, they are having queries that, you know, whether my child is now eligible for another appreciation certificate because they are keeping the track of in which arena the child is showing improvement. And even the children are having healthy competition amongst themselves that I have got bronze, I need to go for silver now. I've got silver, I need to go for gold now. My parents will be honored along with me. So it's a partnership which we have developed by just introducing a new term and a new program. So there are many new programs which we introduce. We try to commit ourselves to introduce 10 new programs every year so that there's something new happening in every class, in a, with every bond between teacher and student, teacher and parent, and teacher to teacher as well. That is how we keep the energy levels high and we keep everybody engaged in the journey of re-evolving ourselves. We, we believe in reflection research and renovation so we need to reflect on what ways we adopted in the past how well they have worked we need to research on how we can improvise them and then of course we need to reinvent them we you know re-innovate them that is so how we, 
Uh, ma'am, as you just talked about the uh, programs that uh, you're uh, launching in your school. So, uh, as a lot of students point out that, you know, uh, children today are less creative and imaginative. So, how can we blend the education and creativity together? It's very important for us to break the monotony or the stereotype of teaching through a book. Yeah. So, what we do... I coined a term called 3C program that is creatively crafted curriculum where every teacher has to challenge herself to cover a particular topic without book, notebook and blackboard. So whenever a school starts, maybe for the new session or after a long break, we have a 10 days program, 3C program that is creatively crafted curriculum where students are engaged in doing things where they are learning by doing, not by reading or writing. So here the engagement level improves. So what I said in the beginning, enabling environment and engaging efforts. So the, this was met by 3C program. So when we implemented this for 10 days, post that I took the feedback from the parents and they were, they had a lot of praises for this because they said that our children are coming with a lot of thoughts to share. They are full of energy. Mama, maths, this happened. Mama, in science, this happened. Mama, social science, we did like this. It was so very new and so very exciting. And children remember the content of the class. Otherwise, if a teacher is teaching from the book or she is, you know, playing the screen of the smart board, students feel that it's the same old thing going every period, every day. There's nothing new and exciting. So they tend to withdraw their attention. So how to keep them engaged is through enabling environments and through activities. And when I took the feedback from the teachers, because they were the ones who worked the hardest, I need to know whether they are comfortable, whether they are happy with it, whether they can go on with this. They said, ma'am, it was too empowering. We felt energized. We felt more confident that it's not our teaching learning process is book dependent or board dependent. We can go beyond the walls of classroom. We can plan so much innovative things for just delivering that content, which is a part of our curriculum. So slowly and gradually, though we started with one chapter, they said, ma'am, we can cover two chapters like this. We can cover three chapters like this. So that was also, you know, taking feedback from all these stakeholders is very important to ensure you are at the right path. In case there is any mistake, you can always take a U-turn. There's no point. There's no problem in that, isn't it? So innovation is very, very important. And, you know, at times we can use newspapers to teach them all the subjects, social science, science, mathematics. There's such statistical information coming in newspapers, especially student editions, great articles, autobiographies, where children can comprehend well, they can learn new vocabulary, they can underline the language parts, underline all the adjectives, all the pronouns, all the adverbs in this para, try to frame some open-ended questions. They'll be framing the questions. So there's a lot of excitement. They're learning the current affairs, but they're learning different languages while doing that, isn't it? So there are a lot many things which can be devised only if we are intended to do that. Ma'am, teachers are really working hard every day and night, I've seen. They're yeah. coming up with new, new, new things yeah. that, you know, to keep the students engaged during the online classes. So, um, I'm moving forward, uh, the COVID and the subsequent lockdown, uh, you know, have made remote learning unavoidable. I ju just you said, and somewhere proves that, you know, we need innovations in school, specifically uh, hinting towards work practices and resources. So, what are your uh, opinions on that? I believe it's very important for us to ensure that we start changing our methods of teaching, even if when we resume to normal working. Flipped teaching is a very common method where the content is already delivered to the child one day before in any form. The child goes through it on his own, tries to assimilate the information and then comes back to the class for discussion and deliberation. So they have open discussions in the class and they try to exchange their learnings with their teacher. Teacher tries to correct them. Okay, beta, your understanding is going wrong here. Let me correct it. Let me put it right. So that is a very interesting way where you can easily gauge who all have understood, who all have not. Otherwise, this process is delayed to the third or fourth day of teaching that chapter. So this, we can always go for such methods. Secondly, it's very important for us to collaborate. We simply don't have to feel that, you know, my children of my school are my responsibility. I don't know what's happening outside. If we collaborate with government schools, we started a program of collaboration with government schools in our near affinity. And the principals were kind and generous enough to allow us in 
and help us carry on with the program i told them ma'am please let me know the difficult topics of your class 6 7th and 8th my children of the same classes will come and teach this in an activity manner or you know with some really engaging teaching aids they said yes ma'am why not so they forwarded the list we prepared the teaching the students prepared the teaching aids and they were so excited that they are going to another school they'll be meeting their fellow mates and they'll be discussing on this topic they'll be engaging them so there was lot of learning happening when they came back they had big bag of blessings of the principal of that school appreciation notes from the teachers and of course lots of smiles and thank yous from the fellow mates and they said next time when i was to send there was so much of competition i want to go i want to go so they became independent learners they learned how to share they devised their own methods to teach their fellow mates and they got rid of the phobia of you know learning or subject you know any topic so they were teaching themselves while teaching their fellow mates it was such a wonderful collaboration so we can take it to any level dear it's just about academic we can also take it to moral grounds like peer pressure exam uh, stress or anxiety we can take these programs also make a team at our school tell them prepare some module where you can help other students get rid of this problem which they are facing and then send them over there let them run it execute it in their own manner at times we feel you know we are only doing everything that is called lizard syndrome a lizard feels that i am holding the ceiling if i come down it will fall so it's not like that children are very energetic they are very competent we just need to identify their passion and their you know the real potential ma'am this is such a great initiative that you have started doing uh, with the government school you know uh, collaborating with them and sending your students you know for you know vice versa maybe they have something that they can teach your students or your students we have can... invited their students as well because it, even they can come and they are wonderful orators they are wonderful artists we do call them on various occasions like diwali celebration we call the students and you know we team up our child and their child together so that they are one team it's not private versus government they are together and we give them half an hour to prepare and plan what rangoli design they'll make what material they will use and we provide them all so they, they learn to work together they learn to understand each other's feelings and you know we do respect and regard to each other's understanding we invited them for christmas celebrations also we had an art and craft workshop on republic day so that they can all make tricolor decorations for their school so they were here on our tables and with our children and they were working together again the pairing was like this one of our school one of their school so they were to compete with each other how many birds or you know how many fans we are making together so that's how you know it comes out well ma'am this is learn with the lessons yeah very 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 beautiful initiative so uh, ma'am as we talking about you know understanding uh, so uh, to mem uh, to memorize the information that it is necessary but it is also a reason for the loss of creativity and curiosity so the two main aspects of innovation so do you think we also need innovation in assessments as well yes dear uh, it's it's badly required because our assessment procedure is marks based grade based broad learning based we need to make it understanding based and we need to make it you know uh, based on how good they are at implementing the skill set which they have learned from the school in their real life so it's very important for us to ensure that the rubrics of our question paper tries to focus on the understanding level rather than broad learning and that should just be a part of it even the new education policy is laying due stress upon the same it's very important for us to ensure that they are given various platforms to display their learning levels how they are solving their day to day problems or the problems of the society they can be given different projects to work upon while you know working in teams it's very important for us to lay stress upon problem solving methods of learning project based methods of learning gamification flipped teaching as i already discussed and design thinking these are the skills of 21st century the teaching skills so when we try to engage them or you know involve these methods into our teaching learning process i'm sure we are going to move forward at a very good pace uh so ma'am uh you just said design thinking uh, or learning i think yeah so uh, what exactly uh you mean by that like uh, could you please elaborate yeah we need to just identify any problem prevailing around us and we just need to make a group of students where they can design upon it they can find a solution maybe they can work on a number of designs and then try to see which will be the closest or the best fit for the problem 
and that is called design thinking where they work together on particular design which is addressing a particular problem of the society or a particular category of people great so uh, ma'am how can innovation in technology offer playing and experimenting field to uh, you know teachers and students so that they can explore and innovate mm -hmm. See, it's very important for us to now realize that whatever growth all the professionals in the field of education have achieved in these four months, they could have never dreamt of otherwise. You know, because online trainings were so much available at their ease in the evenings, in the mornings, by the best experts of our country. Even uh, IIT and IIT professors were delivering good talks. Then officials from higher bodies of the educational uh, sector so it was really a great learning happening even cbse had you know started all their center of excellence were working at full boom and there were so many sessions every day around four to five sessions each day so the teachers got so many chances to learn so this gives a clear idea that collaboration is the key ahead if we learn to collaborate with other schools maybe of delhi gurgaon of bangalore of other parts of the country then finally we can collaborate with abroad schools and try to exchange our culture our techniques our methodologies the growth will increase multiple at a, at a very high pace it will increase multi levels so it's very important for us to ensure collaboration through technology and take the learning levels and learning outcomes to a great height what they were simply thinking or imagining or watching in a smart video we can now just try to show them actually live by you know collaborating with that organization sending certain proposals asking them what projects they want our children to be engaged in then taking students who want to volunteer setting a training schedule and then finally planning a workshop so lot many things can be done children symposiums can be organized debates can be organized and even you know seminars or webinars can be organized in the same platform we are using to conduct webinars every weekend for parents first we identified what are the problems parents are facing during this phase of pandemic and then we said okay let's hit each topic one at a time every weekend let's even take the expert parents who are you know expert of their field and they can also come in as resource person a counselor can be there a doctor of our school can be there coordinator can be there and we can just inform the parents and you know have a good conversation with them where we are addressing their concerns so it's not just to show off that we are doing so much it's just to help them where it is actually paining during this pandemic because they really need the support um, that is true uh, so ma'am there are uh, during the pandemic there are so many challenges going on so how do you think we should move ahead with the futuristic approach for quality in our, you know for the quality in education see it's very important for us to ensure that we believe in the principle of 3i intent implement and impact if we have a good intention and we implement it in the right manner the impact nobody can stop it impact will surely come it will surely be visible like we felt that during pandemic when there was a lockdown in the beginning uh, the initial phases were quite strict and quite horrifying like people were not mentally prepared for it so it was difficult for parents grandparents children to take it and some were not able to cope with that situation so we immediately realized that import, uh, that need and we floated we care program our counselors were available 24/7 for anybody from the family of our child so that's great so they were like we floated that in case you, you are feeling you are feeling anxious or you are you are feeling the stress levels are increasing or you are feeling low you can always approach us at any point of time so that program also worked very well so we had the intention we implemented it in the right way and the impact was visible the parents were supported the students were supported then we also realized that when we started our online classes that was the beginning of the session yeah. children didn't had any idea how my teacher is like what casual talks she does what are her anecdotes and what she believes in what are her principles so even first formal lecture would have you know all rules and regulations of the classroom teaching isn't it so we allowed them chit chat sessions on every weekend every saturday a teacher will allow children to vent out all their thoughts what new they are doing during this lockdown what are how they are passing their time what they are feeling what they are learning from each other how much phone they are using how much tv they are watching how they are helping their parents 
what new taste or passion they have developed so that exchange of thoughts and that conversation in a lighter form informal manner or casual manner was a great booster for the children they could understand their new teacher better they could bond with her better and therefore they could trust her with all their problems and weaknesses <clears throat> so i would just say that you know 3i is the thing we have to believe in we need to have good intentions and the right way to implement it and nobody can stop the impact from you know showing its face a glowing face yeah. definitely the fact that you just said is <laughs> true uh, so ma'am uh, ending the session would you please suggest uh, any uh, you know stress free books or tv shows for all the students or even parents and even the teachers who are really working hard see uh, here i would just like to add another innovative idea <laughs> when the pandemic started we started minutes of mindfulness every evening 6 o'clock we used to send a motivational video or a nice song with the positive you know lyrics so that the whole family can enjoy and the parents and the children were so happy they used to wait eagerly for 6 in the evening till late we are floating it with a small write up and a small video that what this video is trying to convey and what we are expecting from you when we are sharing this video and we had started getting wonderful messages from all the parents that ma'am we all as a family are eagerly waiting including grandmother that what's going to come today at mom minutes of mindfulness so there are lot many channels it's only we need to explore them and if we have the intention of serving them to the best of our capabilities nobody can stop us isn't it so here i would just like to say as you were talking of sources one is serenity prayer i hope you must have heard about it god grant me the serenity to accept the things that i cannot change courage to change the things that i can and wisdom to find the difference between the two so let us work on the things which we can actually change and god will surely grant us the serenity to accept the things which we cannot and uh, there are lot many good sources for teachers which i can recommend like teacher magazine mentor magazine progressive school chicken soup series for indian teachers that's also a wonderful book and then 21 uh, 21 skills for 21st century 21 lessons of 21st century this is written by yuval noah harari israeli author great author that also is a very highly recommended book then five minds for the future that is written by howard gardner that i would recommend for the teachers again and of course there's lot of literature you know moving in the social media also isn't it we need to pick the right things and put them at the right place and share it with all our friends so that you know we can learn the lessons when we share we learn ourselves so it shouldn't be just clicking you know the buttons on the mobile it it should actually be you know registering in your brain first and then sharing with the others so i strongly believe that we should take all positivity from around ourselves whatever positive is there try to believe in the leader's language not victim's vocabulary which is most important this will solve half of our problems so this is what i would strongly recommend that let's give up and one thing i would like to add that you know we should always remember that there are certain things which come automatically in our life and there are certain things which we choose see worries come automatically you would never expect a worry on your door isn't it you will not work for it also but it happens automatically so worries come automatically but happiness and courage is a choice we have to make anger comes automatically we never feel that i have to get angry and i have to show how i look when i get angry we usually avoid that isn't it so but anger comes automatically but peace is a choice we have to make negative thoughts come automatically positivity is a choice we have to make so it's very important for us to choose the right things though negative things will definitely come and try to cast their impact on us but we have to be wise choosers let's choose the positive things and move forward with optimism thank you so much ma'am thank you so much for your kind words and uh, for all our viewers thank you so much for joining us today with uh, monica ma'am and uh, uh, we have uh, an event today at campus care debate at 5 pm for all the uh, subscribers and for all the viewers who are there right now please watch the show at 5 pm and all uh, the uh, there is uh, exciting prizes for the audience as well and thank you so much ma'am thank you dear thanks a lot thank you,